Uh, yeah, the pop up will come. Cool. And reizen, of course, the free user to know, is means to travel. Um, yes, that does um, coincide with what is in your book. That's nice. Sometimes they don't match up, uh, but luckily they do. Um, so what will we do today? Of course, we'll go through words of the week. We will cover the homework of last week. Even more homework. Oh, so much homework you guys have to do. Uh, then we'll finally learn about the difference between de and het, the definite articles in Dutch. Uh, we'll learn about a fun new verb, gaan. Uh, we'll learn some words related to transport, uh, some place names in the Netherlands, uh, and we'll do some exercises along the way. And then we are at the Zin van de Week, and we have a quiz, and then we're done already. Nah, sound good? Um, again, always feel free to interrupt me during anything, uh, especially when we're doing homework, because you might have some burning questions related to that. So let's not jump right into it. Oh, I don't think we have slides for homework. That doesn't matter. We can just... Yeah. Where's the test? Ah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Then we'll first do the word of the week. The slides know better than I do. Uh, het woord van de week is... Utrecht, Utrecht. So that is maybe the city that you're living in, Utrecht, but then pronounced according to local dialect, which is also called Utrechts. Um, the city of Utrecht is located in the province of Utrecht. And they, again, they speak Utrechts here. Very original all around. All around. Um, not much to say about this word. Uh, but just to know, uh, just a, a tip that if you pronounce it like this, then people from Utrecht will like you more. How do you know if someone is from Utrecht? No idea. Just try it. Maybe if they're wearing red and white, a red and white football polo, then you might know. All right. So for the first exercise, you had to do some mathematics. Um, which, uh, we'll, we'll, mm, now nah, I'll just go through the first four myself, because those are easy, and then we'll go through the more difficult ones uh, with you, because I like to make things difficult for you. So first we have 13 plus 5 is uh, 18, 13 plus 5 is 18, 8 min 0 is 8, 8 minus 0 is 8. 15 gedeeld door 3 is 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 4 keer 1 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Very difficult. Um, I'll just do the last two with you. 30 plus 6 is 36. Mm. And then 90 min 7. Oh, wait, sorry. That is 30 plus 6 is 36. And then 90 plus 7 is, uh, min 7, sorry, is 83. 38, uh, 83. See, I also messed up. It's uh, really annoying. Then, uh, Caitlin, could you tell me what, what 32 gedeeld door 4 is? Yes, so that was... Um... Oh, sorry. I tried to increase my volume, but then I decreased it. Could you repeat that? <laughs> um, 22 divided by, is it? No. 20, Almost. <laughs> oh, uh, ah, it, it got me. The twig got, first got me. Um, 32, mm -hmm. sorry, divided by 4 yes. uh, is 8, so 8. Very good. Excellent. Yes, it is It is uh, tricky, but once you get used to it, uh, it will make sense. Good job. Um, then, let's see. Sean, what is 12 keer 2? It's 36, right? So it would be 36, right? That's very good pronunciation of 36. Unfortunately, it, the answer is not 36. Oh, great. I never went to school for math. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Uh, it, 12 keer 2 
Yeah, you were one uh, multiple of is 24. Because 2 is 2. Uh, if it was 12 keer 3, then it would be 36. Uh, and 3 is uh, 3 is a 3. Very good. I'm not testing your mathematics skills here. <laughs> All right. Here you have to fulfill in the correct conjugation of heaven or zijn, um, which I think is not a super interesting exercise. So I will just go through it for you. If you have questions or if you think, if you don't know why an answer is the way it is, please let me know. But I, that is my bias. I assume that this wouldn't cause you too much trouble. Uh, this first one is a bit tricky though. Zij <laughs> drie zussen. Um, and it can be zij heeft of zij hebben drie zussen. So that means she has three sisters or they have three sisters. Uh, zij can mean both. Jullie <laughs> veel huiswerk. Jullie hebben veel huiswerk. Uh, the formatting, it is back, lovely. Zij, <laughs> elke dag les. Again, the zij can be in she or they. So it can be zij heeft of zij hebben elke dag les. They, she or they have class every single day. Wij, <laughs> 20 jaar oud. Wij zijn 20 jaar oud. Ik, <laughs> een student. Ik ben een student. I am a student. Uh, the top one means we are 20 years old. And I am a student. And then finally, <laughs> jij in Utrecht. Ben jij in Utrecht, without a T. Because when it's a question, you don't have a T with you. Very good. Uh, do you have any questions about this exercise? Or the previous one? I didn't pause to ask you. No, fantastic. And then this one is a bit more free form. And it is bonus, so I won't treat it here. Uh, if you have questions about this, um, please ask them during the break. And then we will continue to schedule programming right now. OK. So we'll jump right into it. Uh, I will warn you from the start, this lesson is a bit on the shorter side for once. This is a very rare occasion, so we'll actually have time to do the exercises. Very exciting. No, you can't wait. Um, but that is for later. First, more explanation. I'm not done talking yet. Uh, de en het. Um, maybe try, let's try to pronounce these separately first. De en het. Yeah, try to get good at pronouncing those because those are probably the most common words in the Dutch language. Meaning the. Wow, very exciting. Uh, de and het are the Dutch uh, definite articles. Uh, just like most European languages, Dutch has two of them. Uh, unlike English, which only has one. Uh, and unfortunately, we have two, which means you have to learn both of them. Um, which is, wow, well, learning two words instead of one, that's very difficult, I hear you say. No, that's not the difficult part, unfortunately. Every single word is either a de word or a het word. Um, just like in French, German, uh, German is three, it's not good, Spanish, whatever, Swedish, all, a lot of languages have two definite articles, de and het. Um, unlike romantic languages, however, the de and het in Dutch do not stand for masculine or feminine. Uh, the het is a neuter word, gender neutral, uh, similar to German das, and de, is the gendered word, which is, so it's masculine slash feminine. And it's used, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say that it is used for masculine and feminine things because a chair is the, and I don't per se feel like a chair has a gender. Um, but yeah, that is a separation. Um, and so we don't really have a strict separation between masculine and feminine things. Uh, we did used to have three words like for this, just like in German. But we decided, ah, no, having three separate words is ridiculous. Two words, on the other hand, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yes. So just like other languages, you have to mostly learn this by heart. Uh, but there are a few tricks you can use um, to know whether a word is the or had. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work for every single word. But these are a few where you will always know. The first one is words ending in je such as het biertje, 
these are always het. So all these words that I will mention now are always het words. Um, the je suffix is indicative of a diminutive, so like a smaller version of a word. And if you see it, you know that it's like a smaller version of the thing, but not per se literally. It, um, Dutch people love to use diminutives for fucking everything. Uh, I think I mentioned this last time as well, or I, I just always say this, but Dutch people really, really, really like to diminutivize. That's a def def definitely, definitely a word, everything. Boekje, tafeltje, stoeltje, oh, it just sounds kind of cutie. Sounds like fun if you say it, it doesn't sound as serious as saying, oh yeah, the stool. Mm -hmm. Very definite. No, stoeltje. Ah, oh, nice. Um, the rules for making diminutives are, mm, I'll do that later, are very difficult. I think, yeah, I definitely talked, talked about this last time. And so we don't really teach you, them to you because it's annoying. Just know that if you see a y, it's a diminutive. And in general, you can add y at the end and it will register as a diminutive. Um, and over time, you kind of learn which words have a y or a ch or a p or a k. Um, but those words are kind of difficult. Here we see, for example, beer. Beer means beer. Wow. Uh, and it is biertje, not bierje. Maybe in your head, you can try to make sense of why biertje sounds better than bierje. For me, it makes sense. I hope at some point that will start to make sense for you too. Secondly, uh, way less common word, uh, things ending on isme, isme. Uh, these are usually ideologies with the exception of, exceptions of words like tourism and mechanism and organism. I think those are the three exceptions. All the other ones are like ideologies, communism, capitalism, idealism, uh, something, something isme. Those are always het can rely on that, but it won't get you very far. Third, words ending in um, um, um these come from the Latin words ending in um, um, which are also the genderless words in Latin. So if you add Latin, then wow, it just makes sense. Unfortunately, we don't take that many words from Latin since we're Germanic languages, not a romantic one. So this doesn't come up that often. Uh, one example is album or museum, and those are kind of the most common ones. But if you see word with um, you know it is album, uh, it is het. Also, most words that end in um, they're plural, will, we also follow Latin in that, will be with an A. So it's not museums, although you can say that. Uh, it is musea, that sounds cooler. Uh, the example I gave here is pretty bad because it is not alba. That's not a plural. It's albums. Fourth, the words ending in at, meaning uh, such as het resultaat. I'm not sure how, why this is the case. I don't have a fun explanation for it. And then finally, the complicated one, two syllable words that start with g, b, or f. I also have no reason why this is the case, but if a word has two syllables like geluid or begin and starts with either ge, be, or ver, one of these unemphasized prefixes, it is het. Het geluid, het begin. Um, this doesn't extend to three syllable or more syllable words uh, or single syllable words. So what we are doing now, we are having a now sort of Teams calls it a vergadering, a meeting, um, is a de word, even though it starts with ver. So Take your pick on how useful you think this rule is. And that's it. Those are all the het rules. There are a few de rules. Uh, plurals are always de. That's very useful to know. If you see a word, almost always if you see a word ending in an S, it's a plural. Or if you see it ending on en, it's always also, also likely a plural. Uh, so organismus, even though it ends on isme, ends in an S, so it's a plural, so de organismus. Um, things are, are almost always de, are words referring to people. So I am here de leraar, the teacher. So I am de, uh, because I am a person. Trust me, I'm not a robot. Um, or de vrouw, de man, etc. etc. Some exceptions are het kind, like the child. 
in a lot of languages, that is a genderless word. Um, or at least, yeah, it's a genderless word. I think that because it's a very old word, uh, it was before when we had three of those words. And so you couldn't wouldn't call a child like the masculine or the feminine article, but you had the neuter one. So het kind, just like das kind, I think in German. Um, but almost other all other words are de uh, if it refers to persons. But those other head words uh, do have precedent, such as a um, very common way to refer to a girl in Dutch, or maybe again, the only way is saying het meisje, which is a diminutive. So it is het, even though it's a, a person, obviously. Het meisje. Yeah, the singular of that ooh, is uh, de meid with a D, but that is not very commonly used. Um, Sounds like you're trying to be like hip with the kids, trying to be like a millennial um, or like a middle-aged uh, soccer mom. It's like, hey, mate, who got it with you? Which, I mean, you might be uh, trying to emulate, but nah. There was a joke in there somewhere, but I kind of lost it. Okay. There's a lot of talking about a, a two words, and I will talk more about one word. Uh, the indefinite article. Un. So read that for me. Un. Uh, you might notice that this is spelled the same way as the number one, which is pronounced as ein, and they are pronounced differently. And usually, the way you can uh, distinguish between them, if you look at your number list in page nine, is that one ein has these dashes on top of it, kind of like in in French, when you have like cafe, you have this accent. I'm not sure what the word is. Uh, and in Dutch, we also use that. And here we use it to distinguish the sound, namely that this is a and not e. And so this is un, if it is without and with the accents, it is een. And it means a uh, or un. Uh, unlike English, here we have one, while English has two. Uh, and it's the same for all nouns. So we don't have a de and a hat version. That's nice, at least. Um, and just like a lot of other languages, Germanic ones mainly, the plural does not have an indefinite article. So you have un boekje, a booklet, uh, and you have boekjes, booklets. And not like in French, les booklets or something. Um, and bad French. Again. Uh, I'm not sure why this is here. This doesn't really add anything. Uh, the auto, the autos. Had oh yeah, it's about the. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, you might have questions like, oh, how, Thomas, how do I form a plural? I really need to know. Uh, you will have to wait until lesson five, where we will form so many plurals. Um, but in general, you can just try sticking en to the end. That works for like at least 50% of them. Het paard, de paarden, the horse, the horses. Cool. OK, now you're up to speed with your articles. Um, good tip. Thanks, slides. Um, if I teach you a word and I don't, and I when I teach you a word, I usually try to tell you whether the word is de or het. And I would recommend writing them down, even if you are not going to look at it again. I mean, it would be cool if you like help help some people have like a little notebook where they write all the words they know down. Um, if you do that, write down if the word is de or het. But even if not, even if you don't have one, just write it down with de or het. If you write that down, that will cement it in your head way better than if you just heard it. Um, in general, it just takes a lot of practice learning which words are de and het, and don't be afraid to mess it up. Uh, Dutch people, uh, they might be annoying about it, but just ignore them. <laughs> if you don't know if the word is the head, you can ask me, or you can download the head app. Wow, it's very exciting. <laughs> it's just like a dictionary, but instead of telling you the translation, it tells you whether the word is the or head. I'm not sure if you are that desperate for Dutch knowledge, but if you are, you can find it probably somewhere in, in App Store. 
No, okay. The break is way too soon. That's uh, it's only it's not even half. Like, ooh. Okay, so we will just continue with the next thing. Um, now let's let's actually do the exercise since we have so much time. Um, uh, but it's such a boring exercise. <laughs> okay, I'll give you like uh, three minutes to do this exercise here, do or head. And just really try to quickly practice what we just uh, what I just told you about the the head rules. If you were already bored with my explanation, I fill it in. You are a smart person. But let's just quickly do that so you have some practice with it. If you have questions during this time, feel free to ask as always. Although. These things are not super confusing, I think. And now I can turn off my heating. This is killing me. Right. How are we feeling being done wise? It's pretty quick, but it's a short exercise. Oh. You sound like a robot, uh, Julia. <laughs> or is it just me? I don't think it's me. No, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a question or were you indicating that you were done? Maybe use the chat. Yeah, you can use the chat. Can I just ask, like, how bad does it sound in Dutch? Like, if you use the wrong. Like if you use the instead of head, like what would be the equivalent in English maybe? Like how weird does it sound to a Dutch person if you say like, I don't know, head uh, or like the museum or something? Um, let me think. I think it sounds, it's not that uncommon to hear. Okay. But it does sound a bit. Um, no, I, I I don't know. It, it, it kind of depends how you. I think it, it it depends a lot on the person hearing it. Um, so I'm obviously a bit more used to it. But I think um, if you live in a more multicultural area, like I do here in Lombok and Utrecht, you hear that a lot more. People not doing the or head so strictly per se, they just they often make everything de because de is way more common than het, like yeah. I think 70, 30 split or something. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't sound that weird to me. It doesn't sound weird to me anymore. But I do remember it, it's sounding a bit, it sounds a bit off, but it's yeah. like, like it's, it's to be expected if you're not uh, fully comfortable with the language yet. But I don't think it's like, it's not like, okay. what, what are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. 
The museum? I've never heard of that. No, I know they understand. I was just wondering because like, uh, yeah, like how big of a, you know, error is it kind of? Yeah, no, that's, it's uh, understandable to, um, understandable to us. I don't think I can give a very objective opinion about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I do know is that you shouldn't really care about what, how it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and just go for it, even if it's wrong. You'll probably be wrong often, but it's, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. As far as understanding goes. No, that's why I'm asking, because I know I'll, this will probably take the longest to learn, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's fine. How, how, I, if I can ask, do you speak a language where it does make a difference? Do you have two articles? Um... I don't know. Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> well, you just know you speak so many languages. You don't. No, no. I'm just. I, I didn't think about it. But uh, well, in French you have learn la, right? So I had to learn that. But it's kind of the same, right? Just no yeah. whether yeah. it's feminine or masculine. There's no not a system. Mm -hmm. I don't know how if how how French people think about that, but uh, I'm not sure if someone speaks French, you could say that. Maybe make him say that this and we're saying overview is it? Actually. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, overview, an overview. I think it sounds pretty similar indeed. Uh, overview, an overview. I think it's yeah, approximately on that level. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Do any Dutch people get it wrong? Like they don't know what some words are or no? Uh with some specific words, it can be difficult. And it's mostly because there's not very strict some words aren't very strict with that. Um, like, I always get it wrong with dexel, which means lid. Yeah. I never know if it's het dexel or de dexel. I think it's de dexel, but it sounds wrong to me. So I always say it wrong. And dolhof, which means maze. I think it's de dolhof, but to me, het dolhof makes very more sense. So I, I get some of these, I get mixed up. Yeah. yeah um, okay. But I think, uh, I think it's way more common with demonstrative pronouns like this or that, which also depend on the or het. Mm -hmm. A lot of Dutch people can make, mix those up. Okay. Thanks. But uh, there, there are definitely not, uh, some th a lot of things that people mix up that have become standard parlance. I don't think the or hat is at that point yet. I would like it to. I would like to just have one article. I think it's nonsense to have two. Why? <laughs> unnecessary diff unnecessarily difficult. Yeah. Like so we'll see. Maybe in uh, 30 years, we'll just have one. Hopefully this year. <laughs> That'll be easier. Yes. <laughs> be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. But good question. And uh, you had a question, maybe, um, uh, whether straat goes with het or de. It is uh, de straat. The, yeah. I want, to, I want to translate as the street. But that's like, you know what straat is. And that doesn't make any sense in English. It's de straat. Yes, it is the strap. <laughs> We're like, is it the strap? It is. Um, I doubt everything. <laughs> almost all uh, street words are de. So it is de weg, de laan, de. The snelweg, same word. The only one that isn't de is plein. So you saw that square, that is het. So it's a, a dumb plein in Amsterdam, dom, the dam square. That's hat. Um, yes. Okay, cool. Then the uh, the questions. Um, okay, I'll, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a do it radically. Um, apologies for the person I'm gonna pick. So, um, Faith, could you tell me all of them? Yeah. Um, so I'll just go down. So yes. I did de, de, het, de, het, 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 de, de. I think that's almost all correct. Could you do that again and say every word as well? Yes. Uh, de universiteit. Yes, okay. that's correct. De school. Mm -hmm. Het museum. Mm -hmm. De Bushelt. Bushelt. Bushalte. Bushalte. Perfect. Het uh, 
Tourism, tourism. How would you do this one? Tourism. Tourism. Okay. Head bankier. Perfect. Um, head mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, the trend. Mm -hmm. And the uh, work here. That's the one I wasn't sure about. The traffic one. No, that was indeed the only one that is had uh, that you okay. mixed up. The other one's perfect. Very good. Uh, verkeer is, in, is the fifth rule. It is uh, starts with fur and has two syllables. Verkeer, so it's head. So otherwise, very good. Nice. So yeah, this is not too difficult. I assume you won't be doing this in real time when someone tells you a word or when you see words or try to pronounce a word. That would be weird. Um, but maybe this will stick somehow. Cool. Um, any more questions that are Hetler related? Yep. Turn on light. It's getting dark here. Okay, then we are going to Gaan. <laughs> That's almost a joke. Uh, gaan means to go. It's also, it's sort of an irregular verb. It's not really, but it behaves kind of weirdly. And it's useful to know because Gaan is used quite a lot. So, Gaan, let's uh, try to pronounce that. Gaan. Yes, good. Ik ga, jij gaat, ga jij, hij zei het gaat. Wij gaan, jullie gaan, zij gaan. Wow. Example, ik ga naar huis. I am going home. So, gaan often uh, can be used for two purposes. I think there's a slide. Yeah, the slide is annoying. Um, so, it can be used for two purposes. Either to indicate that you're traveling somewhere, which is the topic of this week. Or it means uh, you can use it as the future tense. So we didn't really treat the, the present simple formally yet. We'll do that next week in all its gory detail. Um, but the future tense is pretty simple if you have already a present simple getting to go. So the future simple is just, uh, just like in English, you say, I am going to work tomorrow. Uh, now work can also mean, it's also a noun. I am going to run tomorrow. Yes, that's a, that's an example of a verb. Good job, Thomas. Um, and it just means you're going to do something in the future. Wow, very interesting. Um, and it is almost always used in combination with an adverb of time, like tomorrow or tonight. Hij gaat morgen fietsen. He's going to cycle tomorrow. Ik ga vanavond Netflixen. I'm going to Netflix tonight which is a verb in Dutch. Uh, it's in the dictionary now. I don't think it's a verb in English, Netflixing. It doesn't sound like a verb. Dutch also really likes to make verbs of things that aren't verbs. And the second purpose is, of course, more boringly to indicate where you're going. And for that, you always use the preposition naar, naar, which means towards. Uh, and also often in combination with this thing, to, which also kind of means towards. And together, they, if you only use naar, it's kind of a neutral way to say that. And if you use naar to, it's a pretty, it indicates that you are really at the moment going there, approximately. And sometimes you'll see it and sometimes you won't. So, zij gaat met de fiets naar huis toe. She's going home by bike. Or wij gaan lopend naar de bar toe. We're going to bar by foot. And so, you, we, you can indicate how you're going there with the adverb construction met and then de or het, your transportation met method. Or you can have your transportation method with nd at the end. So, wij gaan lopend naar de bar toe. Uh, we're going to bar by foot. Uh, you can't say we are we gaan met de voeten naar de bar toe. We are going to the bar with our feet. That is not a thing you can say in Dutch. Uh, but you can say we gaan zij gaan met de fiets naar huis. She is going home by bike. Or zij gaat fietsend naar huis toe. She is going home 
cycling, basically. And that's mostly what there is to say about that. Um, and now you know how to do things uh, in the future. And, oops, sorry. Direction oriented. And you can combine these two easily. Ik ga deze zomer naar Japan reizen. I'm going to travel to Japan this summer. Pretty unlikely, but you can still say it. It's a proper Dutch sentence, even though it's not true. You are allowed to lie in Dutch. Then, if you want to say, if you want to indicate what you're going to do, it is pretty useful to know words that indicate time. Wow. So here, the days of the week and just week related words. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and these other things. Uh, let's just go through Monday through Sunday together. So man Monday is, repeat for me, Maandag. Literally, moon day. Tuesday is dinsdag. And this refers to some Norse god, but I can't remember who. Then we have wet, uh, Wednesday, woensdag, which uh, relates to Wodan, Odin. Uh, then we have Thursday, which is donderdag, which means Thunder Day, which refers to Thor. And then we have Friday, uh, Vrijdag, which refers to Freya, the goddess of mm, death. I don't know. And I don't know, I'm not well versed in my Norse mythology. Then we jump ship and then we go to Saturday, Zaterdag, which refers to Saturnus, the Roman god. I'm not sure why we, why we mix this. And then we have Sunday, Zondag, which just refers to the sun. Very fun. Or does it refer to... No, that, it doesn't refer to like Jesus or something. Like, no, it's just zon, not the zone. Mm -hmm. No, just the sun, also fun. Um, if you want to be more specific, you just uh, don't want to indicate what day, but on what time slot of the day. Uh, you can split up the clock in like sections of six hours in morgen, uh, no, nacht, middag, nacht, morgen, middag, avonds. So we have morgen, which means morning. And then we have smorgens, which means in the morning or mornings. No, 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 that's just plural. Um, which is a remnant of the time that Dutch still had cases. So this is short for des morgens, which was the uh, genitive version of morning. Luckily, we don't have it anymore because uh, cases. Um, sucks if you want to learn German. Uh, but we still have this weird dangling S. So we have apostrophe S and then morgen and then another S. And that means in the. And same goes for everything else. So we have middag is afternoon and smiddags is in the afternoon avond is evening savonds is in the evening and nacht is night and snachts is in the night during the night uh snachts doesn't usually get pronounced like that but you drop the t basically when you say that you say snachts <laughs> which is a really ugly word now that i think about it snachts and then we have some other fun words. Uh, tomorrow me is morgen, just like morning. For morning, you can also say ochtend. That's probably more common, I would say. Ochtend. Uh, o C H T E N. I will write it in the chat because someone will ask. Oh, I already had chat open. I can do it. When do you say smorgen and when do you say smorgens? Um, good question. Wait, let me first type this. This is another way of saying mor morning. Um, so if you want to say um, it is morning, het is mor no, they would use ochtend. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. If you want to say smorgens means in the morning or during the morning. So if you want to say, oh yeah, in the morning I always go for a run. You can say smorgens ga ik altijd hardlopen. Um, in other cases, when you refer to that time of day, you would use with without the s's. Uh, it is just kind of confusing because morgen always also means tomorrow. So if you were saying um, yeah, no, I actually would use the I actually have the trouble thinking of cases where you would use um, the non apostrophized version usually you would use the uh, apostrophized version unless you are referring to kind of a specific date. So you say uh, woensdagavond of woensdagmorgen. Uh, heb ik een vergadering met mijn baas. So to, on Wednesday morning I have a meeting with my boss. Mm -hmm. So then you wouldn't use the apostrophe version. Good question. Mm -hmm. So we have morgen, which means tomorrow. And then we have this uh, useful word, and it's a shame uh, that English doesn't do ha do have it. Overmorgen, which means the day after tomorrow. Overmorgen. So overmorrow. I think that is like an old English word. Um, and then gisteren is yesterday, gisteren. And then we have the day before yesterday as well, which is eergisteren, eergisteren. Very useful word. Um, and then we have some more, uh, a more esoteric word. On weekdays, Dutch people use this word a lot, door de weeks, door de weeks. So that is Monday through Friday. Business days. And het weekend, which is the weekend, which we just took from English. I don't know why, because we did have a word for it, het weekende. But at some point we decided, nah, that sounds too boring. We want the English word. Uh, but for some reason we didn't copy the pronunciation completely. So it is written in English and we pronounced like half English, half Dutch. So the A E E we pronounce as English. But the W we pronounce as Dutch. So you say weekend and not weekend. Or weekend, not uh, whatever, stress. Het weekend. The weekend. Um, yeah. I think that is it for now. Let's just have a break first. Um, yes, break slide. So let's have a break for 10 minutes approximately. We'll go come back, do a small exercise. I don't think I have much to tell you, just a little bit about Dutch topography. And maybe you have time to recap an exercise we did miss. Now nah, we can talk. OK, see you in a bit. If you have questions in the meantime, always feel free to ask.
Yeah, we have that. No worries. See you next week. Thank you. See you next week.
Okay, hi, welcome everyone. Hope you had a fantastic break. Let's see where we're in the slides. Uh, present button. Welcome back, welcome back. Come on. And yes, okay, cool. Where are you guys? Go. Okay, so what we will do here after the break is I will tell you a little bit about Dutch geography. Very cool. Um, we'll do a small reading exercise, so that's something we have done, and then we will do a dialogue exercise for a bit and we'll have the quiz. And then we're done. Dialogue exercise, very useful in order to practice pronunciation and just words. Um, there were two other things I want to say, and I forgot both of them. I'm sure they'll come back. So let's first continue. So this is the Netherlands, as you know, beautiful country, interesting shape. Um, I have Oh yeah, the pointer. So as you know, we are here in the province of Utrecht, in the city of Utrecht. Very interesting. The Netherlands has 12 provinces, which are like bigger municipalities. Um, and we have, yeah, we have 12. So from the top, we have Friesland. Oh, very nice, that's where I'm from. Groningen, with the main city being Groningen, also very original. Here, the main city capital is Leeuwarden. We have Drenthe, the most boring province. No one likes Drenthe. Capital is Assen. O uh, Overijssel, capital is Zwolle. Pretty cool. If you ever go somewhere anywhere here, you have to go through Zwolle. Gelderland, the biggest of them all. Uh, main, the capital is Arnhem. Has a lot of, lot of things. Nice nature over here. Uh, then we have us. Well, pretty decent. Not very uh, original, interesting, except for Utrecht, I would say. We have Flevoland, very cool, completely new. Uh, literally built over the course of the 20th century. There was just water here and then it wasn't. Very cool. Uh, otherwise, Flevoland is really boring, just very flat because it was a literal uh, sea. So it's just, so a lot of grass. Um, capital is Lelystad. I'm not sure why I'm going through this actually. But uh, I'm not stopping now. Then we have Noord Brabant. Um, they speak funny. Capital is Sertogensbos, uh, also called Den Bos, if you want to be more boring. If you want to impress people, you say Sertogensbos. I, even, I can't even properly say it. If Limburg, they speak even funnier. Uh, their capital is Maastricht. Um, here they have hills, very weird. Um, Zeeland. No one, no one lives here. <laughs> Capital is Middelburg. Uh, and then we have the big boys, the Hollands. So if you refer to Holland, you're actually referring to these two things. Uh, we have Zuid-Holland with Den Haag or Schravenhagen as the capital. There's, here's where Dutch politics happens. We also have Rotterdam, here-ish, um, which is where a lot of boats happen. <laughs> uh, and then we have Noord-Holland, the capital is of North Holland is not Amsterdam, but Haarlem. Um, this is where the Harlem in New York is named after, uh, which used to be called New Amsterdam, New York. No, Manhattan used to be called New Amsterdam. And Amsterdam is obviously Amsterdam, you know Amsterdam. And uh, look, we have rivers. Ooh, very nice. Um, I'm not sure where I was going with this, but Maybe if you want to answer one of these questions in the, <laughs> the dialogue with what's your favorite holiday destination, you maybe can say Assen, and then you would be lying. 
So yeah, the Netherlands, all the most important places. Um, I, I'm really not sure what I was going for with this. Maybe here, some more pictures of uh, places in the Netherlands. Uh, Rotterdam, he has these weird cubic houses, very distinct. Not all of the houses are like that. Don't worry, people do have actual normal homes there. Amersfoort, north of here, very pretty. The Efteling, the Dutch, yeah, like theme park, that's the word, but very like heavy on the theme, very fairy tale y. And Gouda, I don't know, they, they make cheese. That's where the, the cheese is from. Okay, I hope you learned something from this. <laughs> and now we will practice. Um, so, first, we will do. Now, let's do that. To, let's combine that. Uh, so we have a bigger exercise. So I will put you in groups again. Very easy for me. Uh, and I ask you, or my roommates are being very loud, uh, to read this small text and answer these questions about the text together, preferably. Or you can sit in silence with the, the two of you and answer it together and then move on to the other exercise, which is a small dialogue exercise. Um, it has the answer, question and answers. And the thing is, one person asks the question, the other person answers, and they switch roles. Um, just talk a bit about travel. Uh, for words, please look here. We have some words which are useful for transportation, uh, some more transportation. And she has twice the same words. This should be empty, the bottom one. That did not go well. Oh well. Now we can look at the word train a lot of times. Um, yes, I will put you in groups. And then I will call you back around 2011-25, if that's OK with you. OK? Are there any questions? OK. And let the grouping begin. I always say this too late. Uh, I'll put in groups two for now because it's a dialogue exercise. Always trouble creating rooms for the first time. And there we go. And oh, if you have questions, type it in your chat. I can see that. Good luck. <laughs> 